All right, folks, here we are to break down the black cards that have been downshifted to common in Commander Masters. As you may have seen, I've already gone through the white cards and the blue cards. So this is just a continuation of that series. I'll also be going over the red cards, and I'll be combining the green cards and the colorless cards into one video. So here we are with the black spells. I broke them up by converted mana cost just to be able to go through them quick, smooth, easy. Starting off, we have Witch's Cauldron. For black mana, we've got an artifact originally printed at Uncommon in M21. For a black and one, you can tap and sacrifice a creature. You gain one life and draw a card. So Popper is not really short of sacrifice outlets which is cauldron has the potential to open up an aristocrats archetype just like uh, ministrant of obligation that i talked about in the white video of downshifts and commander masters uh this one saying you gain a life and draw a card kind of helps keep the game going but there are plenty of creatures again like ministrant of obligations that we mentioned in the white video giving you creatures as it leaves the battlefield so a lot of different opportunities to abuse this and make it into something for a big archetype next card i want to talk about meyer triton for black and one you get a zombie merfolk that is a two one the zombie merfolk reads death touch when meyer triton enters the battlefield mill two cards and you gain two life so we got a lot of self mill happening in this set at the common and uncommon section uh, Meyer Triton getting downshifted from Theros Beyond Death, printed originally at Uncommon. Super excited to see some merfolk floating around at Common. Uh, although the zombie is probably a little bit more relevant if you're looking towards creature types. Death Touch, super good on a 2-1 with uh, the mana cost that we have here. Uh, the milling two cards helps enable some sort of green strategies that we'll end up talking about in that video putting things like dread return into your graveyard so you can reanimate uh other creatures uh cards like lotlift giant that will get into giving you extra power or damage for the number of creatures in your graveyard so it does look like they are looking towards some sort of self mill strategy coming out of this set in the common uncommon area Next, I want to talk about Legion Vanguard. This vampire soldier costs a black and one generic. It's a 2-2. It says, pay a colorless, or pay a generic, sacrifice another creature. Legion Vanguard Explores. Explore is reveal the top card of your library. Put that card into your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. Then put the card back on top or put it into your graveyard. So Legion Vanguard adding another sacrifice outlet, this originally printed in Modern Horizons 2 at Uncommon. Uh, paying one and not having to tap this creature is a big deal. Sacrificing another creature anytime is awesome. Being able to draw a card sometimes or put a plus one plus one counter on this and put it into the graveyard is also crucial, helping with that self-mill strategy that Lotleth Giant will be big paying off. Um, Vampire is also sort of relevant. I'm not sure how much creature type support there is for Vampire in Popper. I'd have to go back through. I know there was a lot in Zendikar, which is super exciting. And Ixalan also revisited the creature type. So we'll see how that shapes up in the coming months. The next card I want to talk about is Nadir's Nightblade. This elf warrior comes in for a black and two generic mana. It's a 1-3 that reads, whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. With Mirkwood Bats coming in at 4 mana as a 2-3 flyer, adding to this style of archetype, token generation is going to be at an all-time high in the format. Things like Battle Screech are going to open up a black-white deck for this, which is Cauldron might even contribute with the uh, aforementioned Aristocrats archetype that we were talking about earlier. This could give you a bonus for feeding into that with your creature tokens and sacrificing those and putting those into play. So Nadir's Nightblade is just another tool in the toolbox of the Aristocrats player moving forward. Next card I want to talk about, Demon's Disciple. 
This human cleric hits the battlefield for a black and two generic. It's a 3-1 that reads, uh, when Demon's Disciple enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. Downshifting this to common from Zendikar Rising. Uh, seems like a wonderful way to add to the number of flesh bag marauders that we have at this mana cost. I think this might be the first human at common to meet this description, but this also helps with the Witch's Cauldron and Aristocrat style deck because there are a lot of creatures that you'll want to sacrifice that put tokens onto the battlefield when they leave. So having this and getting that parity of having your opponent sacrifice a creature, gaining advantage out of that by sacrificing something that replaces itself plus, makes Demon's Disciple definitely a crucial investment in this environment moving forward. A card that I've thought has needed to be downshifted to common for a while now is Drown in Sorrow. Coming to us originally from Born of the Gods at Uncommon. Uh, getting downshifted to common, this black, black, and one sorcery gives all creatures minus two, minus two until end of turn. Scry one. So being able to deal two damage or get two power and toughness out of three mana in black has been something that I've thought we needed to be in popper. Shrivel seems to be one of the more popular effects for black, but this being an upgrade to that gives us a little bit more option and utility in what we can get off of the battlefield with Drown in Sorrow. Uh, three mana is a lot more than two mana, and on the play against things like Spell Stutter Sprite, Drown in Sorrow is going to be a much better option than Shrivel. Uh, also answers a lot of the stuff coming out of the red decks that are leaning into Koldotha Rebirth and Burning Tree Emissary. So giving black decks this resource kind of looks like it might narrow them into some sort of mono black control strategy. Maybe Pestilence makes a huge resurgence. Who knows? Moving along, we've got Carrion Grub. This insect comes in for a black and three generic. It is a 0-5 that gets plus X plus zero, where X is the greatest power among creature cards in your graveyard. When Carrion Grub enters the battlefield, mill four cards. So I like how they've changed the keyword for, or created a, I like how they've created a keyword for put the top cards of your library into the graveyard. Um, if you're targeting yourself, it says mill. If you're targeting someone else, it says mill target player. Originally printed at Uncommon in M21, this Carrion Grub getting downshifted is just further evidence that they're looking for that graveyard strategy out of black in this set. Making a lot of these cards common to fill out the set, especially a master's level set, is smart and popper is an eternal format so it can handle the addition of these new cards without being completely broken super exciting to see carrion grub do some work in the format especially with the land cyclers coming out of the lord of the rings set uh troll of casa doom being a six power if carrion grub's already on the battlefield and you've got the troll in your graveyard it's a six five for four mana. So not a whole lot of difficult hoops to jump through to make carry and grub good, but we'll see what the format looks like after all of these cards. Again, there have been 40 added to the format and this is just the black cards that we've been talking about in this video. So keep an eye out on that. Next card I wanna talk about is one of the more exciting downshifts in the set. A lot of people lost their mind when they saw that Dread Return was getting downshifted to common. Originally printed at Uncommon in Time Spiral, for two black and two generic mana, this sorcery gives you return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. More often than not, though, it is cast for its flashback cost of sacrifice three creatures. That means you can cast this card from your graveyard for that cost, then exile it. So the big thing that this card used to do and does in the legacy format is dredge. You ended up 
pretty much trying to put your entire library into your graveyard in one fell swoop or two fell swoops. Put a bunch of Narc Amoebas onto the battlefield, sacrifice those Narc Amoebas to reanimate something massive that ends up ending the game. It usually was Grave Troll, Golgari Grave Troll, in the Legacy Dredge deck. Since it is banned in Modern, this is going to be one of the first opportunities a lot of people have to interact with Dread Return. And since Narc Amoeba doesn't really do anything in Popper, since it's been printed at Uncommon every time, or Rare, um, there isn't the potential, at least in that angle, for abuse. You might have to jump through a couple of hoops to be able to get your three creatures onto the battlefield, or even more so a couple of hoops to mill yourself a threat. But having a four-cost reanimator spell in black is something that a lot of people have been clamoring for in Popper. So Dread Return being the premier for drop to do that, um, Seems like a natural addition to the Popper format. Uh, the next card I want to talk about, I've already mentioned a couple of times, is Lotleth Giant. Being downshifted to common from uncommon in Guilds of Ravnica, this zombie giant comes onto the battlefield for a black and six generic. And it says, when Lotleth Troll enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to target opponent for each creature in your graveyard. At 6-5, it is a very sizable threat. 7 mana is expensive, but we did just mention Dread Return and a whole slew of other cards in this color just alone that are encouraging you to self-mill. One of the things Golgari has been famous for throughout Magic's history, that's the green-black guild from Ravnica, is the dredge mechanic and taking advantage of the things that are in your graveyard and using those to further your position in the game. So Lotleth Giant coming into the Popper format is definitely something worth keeping an eye on. Uh, Exhum exists. The more exciting element is the self-mill element, I think. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what other cards get paired with Lotleth Giant to make this thing super powerful because i honestly i think that of all the cards that i've mentioned that this one is going to be one of the more played moving right along we've got one of my old favorites originally printed at uncommon in apocalypse phyrexian gargantua for two black and four generic this phyrexian horror enters the battlefield as a four four and says when it enters the battlefield draw two cards you lose two life so Phyrexian Rager at a black and two generic 2-2, two -two, doing exactly half of this card, has been a staple in the format for a long time. So I'm honestly surprised to see that Phyrexian Gargantua hasn't been downshifted prior to this, but it might have a little bit more of an impact and enable more mono black strategies than I'm honestly giving it credit for. Uh, I did see Grey Merchant of Asphodel show up in a league a few days ago, so it's not that surprising to see more and more mono-black control-style threats printed that uh, kind of try to replace themselves. The whole Phyrexian Arena style of paying a life to draw a card seems pretty exciting and prevalent in this format. and. Honestly, exhuming this on turn two seems like a pretty sweet deal. Not gonna lie. But that is all of the black cards getting downshifted to common in Commander Masters. Are any of these getting your wheels spinning? Thinking up of any sweet new recipes you want to throw together? Utilizing any of these awesome new ingredients that Popper has? Put them in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you want to see more. Make sure that bell is up so that you get the notification whenever I put out the red one and the green and colorless videos coming up. Alright folks, until next time, keep cooking.